Hi there, I'm Kim and I'm going to be taking you through a short presentation on making a UCAS application. In terms of what we'll go through in this presentation, we'll look at the application timeline, the application process, personal statements, and what happens after submission. Some key facts around UCAS. So UCAS is a completely online application and it's centralized. So you'll be able to access all UK universities through UCAS. You have a maximum of five choices. Um, so that could be at five different universities or it could be multiple choices at multiple universities. There are some restrictions. So if you are looking to apply for medicine, veterinary science or dentistry, you can only apply to a maximum of four courses in any given year, but you could use that fifth choice in a different area. And also if you're applying to Oxford or Cambridge, you can only apply to either one of those in any year. In terms of the application cost, it's 20 pounds for one choice or 26 pounds if you're looking at applying to between two and five universities. There is what we call equal consideration and invisibility. So this means where if you get your application in by the appropriate deadlines, you will be considered by each and every university. And invisibility means that we only see your application to us. So we base our decision um, based on your background and based on our individual university requirements. In terms of decisions, you will have one of unconditional, conditional, unsuccessful. Unconditional means you already have all of your results um, and you meet the re university's requirements. Conditional might mean that you're awaiting your results. And unsuccessful is unfortunately where a university feels that you do not meet their entry requirements. In terms of the application and um, timeline, there's quite a few different deadlines. So I'll go through these with you. So in terms of the deadlines, the early course deadline is for medicine, um, veterinary science and dentistry, and also um, Oxford and Cambridge are the 15th of October. The usual UCAS application deadline is the 15th of January, though this was pushed back this year to the 26th of January. Um, you also can make applications up to the 30th of June. Um, so the final UCAS application date is the 30th of June. But if you want to be having the equal consideration and also just from a process of giving universities a bit more time to look at your application and also giving yourself more time to look at the university um, choices, then I would make the application by the earlier deadline of the 26th of January if you can do. In terms of um, universities' decisions, if you make your application by the 26th of January, then they will respond to you by the 19th of May, and then you have until the 9th of June to declare your firm or insurance choice. Um, and with that, obviously, if you've applied later, there are some later deadlines that come into play. Other dates that you might want to consider is UCAS Extra. So if for any reason you decide after you've made your first five choices that those choices are no longer valid for you, then you can make a UCAS Extra application and have one more choice. Um, and then if it gets to results and you've either achieved um, better than you thought you were gonna achieve or maybe not as good as you thought you might achieve, then there is also UCAS Clearing, which gives you another option to apply to UK universities that year. So just to go again over some of these deadlines, the 15th of October, as I said, is the earlier deadline. The 26th of January is the deadline um, for equal consideration. Uh, there is UCAS Extra that falls um, between February and July. Um, and the 9th of June, if you've received all of your results by the 19th of um, May in terms of which universities will make you offers, um, then you can reply to those um, by the 9th of June, so choosing your firm um, or your insurance. And as I say, the 30th of June is the last date to submit a application before clearing. In terms of things that you might want to think about um, is you do need to consider the subject, the course content, the structure, the study style, um, the entry requirements. Um, are there any additional entry requirements um, such as the LNAT if you're looking at taking a law program or um, if you need a certain level of GCSE or A-level maths to take a program, um, you might want to consider those. Um, you also need to think about um, the location and the size of the university and how you um, will cope in that environment. So think about campus versus city. Think about a big student population versus a small student population. Think about transport links, accommodation, finances, and also extracurricular activities that you might want to take. In terms of the initial research and where to look, you can look at university's own websites. Uh, you can look at UCAS, that's a great website for getting an overview of lots of different universities. And you can also um, 
build a short list on UCAS by selecting which program you're looking to apply to, and then it will provide you with all of the universities that offer that program. You can also look at um, websites such as um, Unistats, um, which will give you, again, a bit more of a comparison of different universities moving forward. You can also look at the social media of each institution, um, and that's really good to do because um, often with the social media sites, there's a lot of student engagement, so you can see what the current students feel about their time at any particular universities, what things they particularly like about their university, possibly um, see a day in the life of. Um, you can also talk to your school counsellors and your career advisory service at your schools, um, thinking about what you want to do in the future and how your university degree will help you to get there. And then you can attend um, UCAS exhibitions, um, open days that universities hold, um, virtual open days, um, subject taster sessions and webinars. Um, and much like you're doing today, you'll see that there's lots of different resources that are available to you. You can speak to current students, so you can do this through the student room, or you could do it through the university's own websites. A lot of them have got um, a, a chat to a student option um, where you can see, kind of, again, what um, current students feel about their programmes and about their decision. And also looking back at their UCAS application, if they would have done anything differently in terms of their initial application. You can also look at student videos, blogs, and case studies to get a bit more of an overview. In terms of the application process itself, as I said, you do this all through UCAS. Um, and the first part of the UCAS application is filling in um, your details. Um, it's about uh, a 20 minute process of doing that and it should be quite simple for you. you so you um, need to put in your personal details um, and then next you'll be putting in your choices. So which programs and universities do you want to apply to? Uh, you would then fill in a section about your education to date. So um, it's what qualifications and results you've already achieved and what results you're looking to um, receive this year. You could also put in some details around employment. So again, if you've had any um, relevant uh, work experience um, and you think that would add to your application, you can put that in there as well. You then have your personal statement, which I'll be touching on in more detail later, and also a reference, which is um, somebody from your current school, it could be a teacher, it could be um, a counsellor who would speak to your academic ability and also to the course that you're applying to. And then you just need to check everything um, and pay and send that through. In terms of the personal statement, um, this is one of the most important parts of the application because you're telling us about yourself. So in this personal statement, it, it will be one personal statement for all of your choices. However, if you are applying, um, say, to three programmes for law, but you're also thinking to apply to a couple of programmes for business studies, what you can do is contact the universities that you're applying to, say, for the business studies programme and ask them if they'll accept a supplementary statement via email. And that way that you can then tailor that statement to business studies, but have the law personal statement on your UCAS application, which is the programmes that you're applying to most. So it's the three programs out of five, for example. Um, in terms of the personal statement, there is a maximum of 4,000 characters, which is about 47 lines. And it's a chance to explain your motivations um, to the admissions tutor and staff. Um, so why you're applying to this course, what interests you about this chosen subject, what academic achievements you have um, past and present, and what career aspirations you have for the future. You can also put in there any uh, work, any volunteering, any um, other experience that you've gained that you think are relevant to the subject and, and what skill sets you gain from these experiences. So it's really important to keep kind of returning back to um, anything that you mentioned in the personal statement, how that's going to really prepare you for this program and how this adds to kind of what you're looking to do in the future and your future aspirations. Some other things to note about the personal statement is that you should avoid naming specific universities within your personal statement because it is going to go out to all five choices. So if you say, I've always wanted to study at SOAS University of London, that's great for me to hear um, because I work at SOAS, but it may alienate your other choices. Um, don't try to be too funny or uh, to use too elaborate language um, or use things that are very cliche. Um, that is often picked up a lot by the readers. They just really want an honest 
um, statement about why you're looking to study that particular program and why you want to study it um, at the choices that you that you submitted. So again, with the fact that you're trying to make your personal statement um, hit home with every university, that's also part of that initial research where when you are applying to universities, say you're applying to a law program, you should be looking at law schools which approach law in the same way. Uh, so keep it concise and use your own style. Um, and UCAS does have a, um, a service where it looks at all personal statements. Um, and so it will detect if personal statements have at all been plagiarized. So it's really, really important that it's in your own words. Um, and then the advice is to draft it, to edit it and to revise it. Um, also ask others to have a look at it. So ask your teachers to have a look at it, ask your parents to have a look at it, maybe ask your friends to have a look at it. There may be something that you haven't mentioned um, in your personal statement that they think is really, really key um, and they'll be able to um, give you some advice on that. So it's always good to have a second eye. So in terms of after submission, you should be patient as response times will vary depending on university and depending on course you're applying to. Your application won't be rejected if it's um, incomplete. Each university will normally contact you if there's anything else they think they require. You can submit supplementary information by email. So after you've applied um, through UCAS, if you feel that um, there was nowhere for you to provide additional information or you later want to provide more information, you can do this um, through email. So um, a good uh, example of that is if you are an international student and you're taking um, a range of different qualifications, uh, sometimes there's only room for you to enter in some of the information. Um, and you might want to send in a more detailed transcript to, through to the university afterwards. Um, in terms of SOAS, we don't interview very often, only in rare cases, but you should consider that for maybe some of the other universities and some of the other programs that you might be applying to. Um, and some universities may operate a gathered field approach. Um, this is particularly true for things like medicine, dentistry, and veterinary, uh, where they may wait until they have a certain number of applications through and are looking at those students um, in comparison to each other. Um, at SOAS, we don't do that. We have rolling admissions. So as soon as the application comes in, we are reviewing it. So in terms of your replies um, and our replies to you, as um, I said before, we do have unconditional um, responses, conditional and unsuccessful. So an unconditional offer would mean that you have showcased that you meet all of the requirements that we have and that you have all of your results already. Uh, the conditional would be where you look like you meet the requirements or will meet the requirements of our um, programs, but you don't have your final results yet. And, and unsuccessful, as I said, unfortunately, is where the university feels that you won't meet their entry requirements. So you should wait for all decisions from all choices and then make your firm insurance decision. Um, it's not a bad thing to reach out to universities. So say you have received all of your decisions um, bar one, then you could reach out to that university um, and just ask them if you are able to get that in order to move forward with your firm or your insurance choices. So your firm choice is where um, if you meet all conditions, that's where you'll be placed. So it's kind of your, your first choice. And your insurance choice is your... Um, backup option. So it's usually good to have this as um, slightly lower in um, conditions from your firm offer, um, unless you're really, really sure that you're going to meet um, the firm and the insurance offer. And then all other offers will need to be declined. There is also a 14 day cooling off period. So once you've made um, the decision on which is your firm and your insurance choice, if you then decide that um, those are no longer the choices you want to make and you wanted to select um, one of the other choices that you have, then you do have that 14 day period to make that change. In terms of other options, as I said, you have UCAS Extra, um, which falls between the 11th of Feb and the 4th of July. And if you've used all five choices and had no offers or um, you've drastically changed um, what you're looking at, then you can look to apply through UCAS Extra for one final choice. You have clearing, which is after the 30th of June, if you've received no offers um, or you've declined all your offers or you've not met your conditions, um, then you can look for clearing um, places. An adjustment would be um, where you 
are placed with a firm choice, but you did better than you expected from your um, original um, offers. And so you want to look to find another university um, which may be at higher entry levels um, than you thought you were going to achieve. So just a review of all of the application process. Um, you need to research and choose your choice, uh, your courses carefully. Um, you should register online with UCAS in order to apply. You need to complete the application and process the payment. Uh, your reference name um, will be added um, by the center or by an independent referee. Um, you will send your application electronically to UCAS. UCAS will then process the application and send it out to your chosen universities. Um, universities will review the application that you submitted um, and make decisions. So either make you a unconditional offer, a conditional offer, or advise you that you've been unsuccessful. Um, you will then be able to view all of the offers um, in your UCAS um, track account, and you can then reply to the offers, say making your firm and insurance choices. And then lastly, that means that um, when your results come in, um, as long as you have met all of the conditions um, of either your firm or your insurance choice, your place will be confirmed. So that's all the information there, but if you have any further questions, you can find um, some resources here to contact us um, and to ask us any um, queries you may have around our courses, around the application process, around how we review you as an institution, um, and any other queries that you might have. Thank you for joining us today.